Are you ready, Shane? I oh wait, is it happening? Is now the moment? It's time we've been waiting for. It's time to talk about Picard. So, All right, I'm down. Let's go. Real quick question: Has is everyone gone to the bathroom? You have your drink. You're ready to go. This is going to be wait. a I'm long good. conversation. We got the news out of the way. We're going to talk about Picard and Strange New Worlds. It's going to be a long one. Is everyone ready? Yeah, I better stop slowing. I better slow down on my drinking. Oh, speaking of, it is Cinco de Mayo. It was the Picard finale, and I have a ton of Klingon blood wine over here, so. Ooh. Might get weird. I'm just saying, might get weird. All right, let's talk about Picard, dude. All right, let's talk about it. Let's jump into this over here. Okay, we open up with Picard. Chateau Picard. They're there. Why are they there? Because Jaborgi, Gerardi Borg Queen, took off on her ship and and left them there stranded right yeah and they're like you know what uh i guess it's fine we're gonna stop this guy from doing harm and then we're just gonna live our lives out here in the in the 21st century apparently they were just ready to do that they're already making plans which i found interesting now one thing that i was very right on and thankfully thank thankfully one thing this season i was right on was not Loris did use her hologram tech to save Renee's life and sacrifice herself in the process. I think it's a we statement on that one, but yeah, okay. It's a so what? I, I think that was a we statement on being right about something. We were right on that that idea. Okay, the, the but thing, I'm, the one, I'm the one who brought up to you that yeah. the eight hour trigger. Right, but you never, so what happened was, is when we saw the preview, or we saw the end of Picard season nine. They said, hey, one one Renee has to die, one has to go. Then we saw the preview for 10 and we saw not Loris in the space outfit. And that's what gave it away. But I said the tech was, was team. Gonna, it was a team effort. It, it was a team effort. But I did yeah. tell you that, that the hologram tech is going to come into play. Why else would they explain it in the first place? Hey, listen, I don't know, but you just keep taking credit for all my ideas. I don't okay, know what to do. Hold here. up. I, I don't know. I gotta like I gotta like break this down. Okay. You know I, but I do right. want to say it was totally it your one... idea that the TNG crew was gonna come back at No, no, see yeah, there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was about to give back to you. I'm like, but it's all your idea on the TNG. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. Okay, so what what's going on here? We are in uh they're trying to uh, formulate a plan on how to stop Adam soon. Here's a problem. I have a couple problems with this. Like, okay. So in stopping Adam soon, there is no branch. Right. Adam soon is the reason why the future changes apparently. So if, if, or if I'm sorry, the Europa mission not going through is the reason why the soon thing go, happens. So it's not that soon has to be stopped. It's that the Euro, Europa mission needs to succeed so that soon in the future, society will look to him for, you know, to save them because of his tech. Shane, I don't, I don't understand. I, <clears throat> well, what? I mean, okay. So, so what? apparently, yeah, it, there was some weird stuff there. I mean, Canon did, I felt like Canon got a little messed with because in this episode, we learned that uh, Rios's adopted son now, I guess the little boy. Right. Will will eventually grow up to uh, invent something that saves the oceans, and he uses the life form that's brought from Europa to to use that to create tech to clean the air and the oceans of Earth. Right. So, which I don't know. I was a little tripping on that because which nuclear weapons happened. are going off. And what's that? Yeah, which wouldn't have happened if Rios didn't come back and be his. Right. Step so if, if, and he wouldn't have known these things. Yeah. It's it's like so it makes you wonder, did did Rio staying back change the future in some way? Because I mean, granted, we don't know a lot about what happened after World War Three and nuclear war, which occurred in 2020, 2026, two years after this show. So Rios and all those guys experienced like everybody who stayed behind. That was great seeing the pictures of Rios and they're out in the, in the truck and they're hanging out and everybody's having a great time. Well, right. two years later, there were nuclear bombs going off all over the world. Right. So, yeah. So I don't know. It was a little bit, little bit, little bit weird there. Yeah. Okay. So explain that though. 
to all the people that aren't, you know, as are aren't as, as invested in, in Trek as as we are here. In two years, it's World War Three, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, nuclear weapons. Uh, you know, um, Colonel Green, the whole nine yards. Yeah, it's 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 the beginning of the end of that civilization, so that we can then you know, 30 years, I think it's 30 years later, uh, we invent warp drive technology in the 2050s, 2050 something. Right. So yeah, I mean, that's what's happening. But apparently this kid is the reason why we were able to get through World War III because he cleaned the oceans and the air with his invention that Rene Picard brought back from Europa, which we've never heard of before. Some life form that gave us technology. It just is, it's, it's a lot of you know, changey canon, but it's not really changing canon. It's like adding to it, but in a way that's like, oh, wow, well, we found this life form on Europa. That's so something I feel like we should have known before. But yeah. Yeah, but that that's not the worst part. The worst part is that mm -hmm. there's a World War Three that takes place for 30 years. Well, we don't know how long it, it goes on for. Until 2050, right? Well, we know that in, we know that Cochrane invents the you know, invents the warp drive and goes in the first warp test in the 2050s. And the but world we don't know shambles. how long. <clears throat> What's that? And we do know the world is absolutely a shambles in 2050. Well, we know it's not. We don't know if it's I mean, it's been recovering, obviously. It's not still like a destroyed. I mean, I don't know. We really don't know. All we get is that one landing where we come in from um, from this from that Star Trek movie from First Contact. That's all we really have of that time frame. Right. Other than the enterprise stuff that shows some 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 video footage, you know, we don't see a lot. Oh, actually, we saw some in Strange New Worlds, which we're not talking about yet. Actually, that's not true. Strange New Worlds gave us video evidence of what happened during World War Three, which we'll talk about here in the next uh, next segment. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So the problem I have overall here is that, you know, World War Three happens. They act like it's just like a blip. When it's not, when it's definitely not a blip, it's like what unites the planet eventually, and it's it's super devastation. So you have Picard who treats it sort of like a blip in history, and then Strange New Worlds leans on it rightly, rightfully so, literally an hour later. Um, and I just don't I don't understand the timing doesn't doesn't seem to fit. You know, Rios knew there was gonna be a World War Three, and he stayed behind anyways. I'm literally like two years later, like two years later. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's true. <clears throat> it's true. The um, <clears throat> they're saying, OK, so it was, it was called a post-atomic horror. So somebody in the chat, Daniel's Hot Topics is saying, I thought World War Three started in 2050 and ends in 2063. World War Three went from 2026 to 2053, according to everything that we that we found. Uh, it was the last of Earth's three world wars. The conflict involved a nuclear cataclysm as well as genocide from eco-terrorism, which we've gone through um, quite a bit. Uh, it, they called it the post-atomic horror. And uh, they're saying that war could have lingered as late as 2079, even through the time that uh, that Cochrane um, did his warp drive. No, no, the second the civil war wasn't the Bell Riots. Was it? Oh, the, the third, you mean the second civil war? Yeah, without the Bell you know, Riots. Well, we're getting to strange new worlds. Maybe we should save that for them. Yeah, we'll save that. <clears throat> yeah, because they yeah, talk about it. That's right. Because yeah, that's adding a civil war that we never even... They at. added a civil war in strange new worlds, which which may not be a bad thing considering what's happening right now uh, in the world and that we're very divided. And who knows what, what could potentially happen, I guess. Maybe 2025, there's a civil war, which then leads to the you know, to World War Three. All right, whatever. All right, moving on. <clears throat> All right, we got through this uh, ridiculously long intro. And then, uh, okay, now here, the Europa mission, the Europa mission. So initially, not Loris did not want to, I'm sorry, not not Loris said, I'm going to go save Renee. And Picard jumps into the stream with her because he's worried about her life, rightfully so. And I'll tell you why. Uh, why Picard jumped into the teleport smoke thing with her because what else is Picard going to do? <laughs> he wasn't going to Soong's house. That's for sure. Right. <clears throat> so I, I do feel that a lot of this, uh, a lot of this season, the writers have been trying to find something for Picard to do. And he doesn't really seem 
to be driving the narrative himself, even though it's the show is about him, right? No, it's a hundred percent about him, you know, and I would, I would argue that this season they did a better job of, uh, they did a better job of putting the focus on him. I don't know. Um, the way everything sort of wraps up, it does make sense. And when I look at it, you know, from the big picture aspect, even though the season was extraordinarily slow and there were elements of it that they definitely could have done better. I do feel like it satisfactorily not only gives us more information about the character, but wraps up something that's, that's been a character trait and allows him to move forward. And that's, that's not a bad thing. Okay. That's fair. All right. So he tries to stop her, you know, there's other ways to do it, blah, 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 blah. So they did say that his influence is Q said at some point that the only timeline where she gets to meet Renee was this one was the one that he was involved in. I mean, that's, I mean, I, you know, I really hate that actually. I hate yeah. that they said that because it was just a way to make Picard feel better about her dying. Um, and I just didn't think it was necessary, you know? He, so he was basically telling Picard, well, it's okay that she died because she always dies, you know? And it was kind of like, we just live in a world right now where we got to like really worry about people's feelings so much that, you know what I mean? That they have to create something so that he'll feel better that he was in the only timeline where something good ever happened. It just right. seems confusing. And um, this is the problem with this whole season is the timeline doesn't make any sense. It's like what you're saying is that Picard is necessary for the timeline to go forward in the right direction, but you need the timeline to go forward in the right direction. So for there to be a Picard and crew that go back and fix the problem in the first place. Oh, you're going to try to break our brain right now. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. <clears throat> When First Contact dealt with time travel, there was a very clear start. They defeated the Borg, or, mo or part of the Borg, they won that battle, and the Borg Cube, in a desperate attempt to say, uh, you know, as in, in a Hail Mary, they're like, F it, the Borg Queen jumps onto a, a little Borg sphere and takes off and, and creates a time tunnel to Earth, because they're close to Earth, right? Yeah. And the, t and the Enterprise follows in the wake of of that uh, time jump and discovers, and while the wake is happening, they actually are doing scans and it shows that Earth is all Borg. And they follow them back to the past. They stop that from happening. So they show for a second the alternate timeline. They see what's going to happen. They stop it from happening and they go back to their time. There was a clear start, a clear start to the time change and a clear end. So that little branch that they were that they were seeing in when they when they were traveling in the wake, they were able to snip off. Yeah. There's no there's no start to this. In fact, what you're telling me <laughs> is that Picard is so important to his own future that he has to travel back to create his future. It doesn't make any sense. Well, they made a mistake. <clears throat> I know exactly what you're talking about. They made a big mistake. So this is Q pulling him out of the out of time. Now, all of the wonderful theories that we've had that totally make sense about the, the self-destruct creating an alternate timeline is all freaking shenanigans. Because what they showed us after the countdown happened, they showed us the explosion. Okay, right. follow me on this one. They showed us the explosion. If Q, if time stops at the moment he pulls them out, let's say he pulls them out one second before it explodes. Q pulls them out before it explodes. And right. then he returns them, arguably too soon. He, he returned them 10 seconds before it was going to, you know, the 10-second countdown. Right. But then they go forward and show us the explosion as if time went forward. So that means that Q snapped them out of, out of time, right, before the explosion. But, the, but it's a mistake. They shouldn't have showed us the explosion. This explosion should never occur because it doesn't occur. He pulls them out of time before the explosion happens. Right. Okay, then he moves them into an alternate timeline of no one's necessary creation. They took us to an alternate, Q took us to an alternate reality, not an alternate timeline. Not really. Because there was nothing. He created it out of a whim, right? Moved these guys into this timeline. They traveled back in time, had nothing to do with Q, right? They traveled back in time. And then Q, uh, once they've fixed the whole problem was soon he snaps his fingers and he puts him right back up in time so you know he didn't he wasn't important to his own future 
Uh, it was merely Q shenanigans the whole time. Well, and how did Jaborgi get there in the first place then? If they had not yet traveled back. Because remember when they traveled back to that point, Girardi wasn't with them. Right. Because, yeah, so she comes from now an alternate reality. They broke through a time barrier. Remember, we still have not addressed this. The shell has not addressed this. The board came through a time portal. Okay, because it talks about, we talked about it, how all of the timey-wimey elements of Star Trek are thrown in there as far as uh, tachyons and that other thing that I can't remember, but it's all time stuff. So they broke through some sort of time barrier from an alternate reality or alternate universe of Q's creation, right? So Q's just snapping people around because the, the time frame of this, the, the time travel of this does not make any sense officially. No, yeah, don't. Right? So there is no beginning. The beginning is Q. The beginning, the end is Q. That's it. That's it. And and, and I'll go ahead and tell you exactly what I believe. And is anybody curious as to why this whole season has felt different? Like this interaction with Q has felt different than what we normally get. Have you noticed that? Yeah, because he's dying. Okay, no, it's because ordinarily Q's interference in Picard's life has always come in the form of creating an alternate reality that we ultimately believe to be fantasy, okay. whether it's Robin Hood, right? Whether it's the trial of humanity, whether it's the multiple timelines in the final episode of TNG, we never felt like something unalterable may be occurring. We always felt like it was a fantasy or something different. Picard season two changes all this. Q this does not feel like a fantasy. It feels like now we're operating in a changed reality. Whereas all of the other interactions with Q, it always feels like some sort of pocket Sorry, universe, like, pocket thing I that's happening you know. Q has created. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So that's the difference. This is real. It feels real. And that's that's why everything doesn't, it doesn't feel the same. Okay. And so, so Q's just it's just Q shenanigans. This it's is why I, I loaded this up because this this is this is how I feel about this. Ah. Is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point <laughs> in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. <laughs> oh, you're talking about what I just said? No, no, okay. no. What you trying to explain? What oh what what happened? What happened makes no. I mean, I, I it feel doesn't. Sorry I mean, for you because you're 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 really trying to explain, and the only answer is Q stuff, and that is like the laziest possible way to explain it, right? Yeah, no, it is. They could have done some really cool stuff here, but it's basically in the end, it's just Q snapping people around. And how did he get his power back at the very end? No, 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 no. He said there's no, 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 no. He. So we got that part is, is covered okay. because he said there's just enough juice left for this. And then when Rios okay. is like, oh, I'm going to take off. He's like, oh, well, if he's leaving, I got I got a little surprise for you. Like that, like because he's not going to be there, he can give you can, can give a little more before he before he finishes. I see. I see. OK, well, all right. All right. It seems kind of janky, but OK, it's super janky, bro. It's super <laughs> janky. This whole thing is janky. It's janky again. So what? So what you're telling me is basically Q is the one who to save Picard from an alternate version uh, version of Jaborgi, yeah. Um, who is ultimately just trying to do the right thing, but you know, he yeah. saves him, and then he goes back in time and he makes moves to create the cup, corrupt timeline so that Picard can go back in the past and meet said Borg just to to, to fix the timeline and meet. Uh, you know, uh, see the creation of Jaborgi so that when they go back to the future, he can do the right thing. Yeah, and and I think the one thing really missing from this is uh, is showing us Q changing the timeline. You know, I think we probably needed to see because he doesn't really quite do it, does he? Yeah, he does he stuff doesn't. with Adam soon, and you're like, yo, what's his purpose for that? Like, but it doesn't really see itself through. So it's like he changed the timeline. Then he goes back. It's weird because did he change the timeline? So he changes it. He goes forward and he meets Picard in the future of the of the. Yeah, we saw things thing. out of order. Well, what I'm saying is, is so he, I guess he went back and changed it. Picard, 
Picard, he went up and then he's like, you know, saying you did this, blah, blah, blah. Picard goes back in time at the moment that Q is changing things. But during that time frame that Q is supposed to be changing things, he ends up helping Picard to stop it from being changed. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Let's just focus my. on Picard. Let's just focus on Picard as a little boy. Okay. Okay. And be better. And the whole Picard as a little boy thing drives me nuts. Because I mean, like, it's not that bad. I mean, you know, it this is, is why it's bad. Is this is why it's bad? Because there is so much missing. Yeah, like, yeah. we're not seeing everything we need to see to understand this. And it, but while you should be showing us the things that help us understand it, instead we're seeing this little mama, little Picard boy running around in these flashbacks. Oh my! I mean, God. okay, let's let's be fair. What they just it? had too many of them. So it's not yes. that it wasn't necessary to have it, right? I mean, you had to have it. If you wanted to show Picard, the reason why Picard has always been closed off, and listen, true to his character, he does not like, I mean, that, that great episode where he goes to Ryza and he meets uh, he meets the, uh, the the girl thief who he kind of fought, gets romantic oh, with. Oh, yes, yeah. I mean, we, we get to delve deeply into his character and the fact that he does not like to be embarrassed. He doesn't like to put himself out there. And it all stems back from this thing that happened to him when he was a kid. And I'm, and that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the problem is, is you just took too many episodes to flesh it out. And while this entire season is about Picard, the, the finale episode had so much stuff crammed inside of it that we just didn't even get really great explanations for everything. And it's just kind of like, oh, yeah. boom, here you go. Here you go. We're going to answer this. We tie everything all together oh. in like the last 30 minutes of the oh, show. Oh, yeah. Let me yeah. answer this question for you with Q. Let me answer this other question with you for you with Q. And then guy, he goes to see Guinan and she know she knew the whole time and didn't give him any heads I'm up. I'm so sorry. I that hard it's hard for me. Yeah. And now let me ask you this question. Does the 1800s happen now? So the, the when data data loses his head, does that happen? Because now I'm so confused because it didn't happen. So then wouldn't Guinan have met Picard for the first time twice? Right. <laughs> so, Jesus. You see what I'm saying? It's just like, uh, okay, well, let, let, we're going to get to that point. Let's, let's go. This. All right. So they, okay. Reset. Rafi, <laughs> Seven, and Rios. They're going to, while Picard and not Lars are going to go to the Europa mission and deal with that. They're going to Adam Soon's lab to deal with Adam Soon. When they get there, they hear Adam Soon's voice uh, telling the computer to do stuff. I hated this so much. I'm going to explain why. And they realize it's a recording, but the voice was actually telling the computer to do stuff as a fail safe. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. All right. Get, you don't need a recording to tell the computer to do stuff. That's stupid. stupid. But it was, it was like trickery. It was, it was TV trickery. That's what it was. Like, you, like <clears throat> um, I'm going to record my voice telling the computer to do stuff instead of just programming the computer to do it. The plot device, man. That's all it is. The stupid plot device. To create, to, cr to create suspense. Here's the deal. This is the this is the problem though, okay? Look, I have been a vastly huge per protector of of Picard. I have tried to explain every single possible thing um with logic. Now that it's over and a lot of the logical conclusions that Shane and I came up with to explain didn't happen, now I can be a little more annoyed because Plot devices are a fine when they're hidden, when hidden, they're clever. Yes. Yeah. It's not fine when anyone can realize it's a plot mm. device. That's lazy. That's super lazy. Right. And the yes. type of fans that watch Star Trek are smart people. Most of yes. us are smart, or at least we understand science fiction. Maybe we're not, maybe I'm not smart, but I understand science fiction. And this, when I obviously like the second they realize the recording. I'm like, well, that's dumb. That's not required. None of that's none of that's possible. And I realized it's a plot device, and it immediately took me out of the moment right there and annoyed me immediately. Yeah, I mean, in in the big scheme of things, it doesn't really matter to what's happening, but it, it does. There is a lot of that, and so it gets to be kind of you know, it's it's kind of an irritating. You you want like we said before, they like to tell us instead of show us, right? You know, and they had to come up with a way to make 
everybody think that Soong was in that room was like, oh, the intense, they're about to kill Soong. Soong's right there. Oh, it's his computer. It's his voice. I just, was it even necessary? They could have like showed up, looked for him and then realized, oh my gosh, you know, and see all this tech here and then explain the tech instead of having Soong's voice, right? Shane, Shane, they could have done what they've done since the 60s and they could have had a countdown running on one of the monitors. Yeah, that would have been great. Problem solved. Like countdown to drone launch. True. That's all you need. There you go. Show us, don't tell us. Right. And now there's a drone and they got to stop them. And, you know, the first thing I thought, because they were like, well, we got to figure out how to hack in here. First thing I thought was, you know, you could just like smash them. And I'm so glad that Rios was like, why don't we just physically disable them? Um, and they explain that they're like, oh, they have bombs, so like they'll go off. Okay. Well, Rocky's got some skills though, so she she was able to. I guess she has the talent to be able to disable it. Well, she, she was trying to. I guess she had, she got manual control, so they can like use one to take out the other three, which is fine. We well, you know what I would have done. I would have uh, tossed her grenade in there and then teleported out. You could have done that. It would have just destroyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like. Not what exciting. Went... Teleport. <laughs> Maybe then, they didn't have a grenade, I guess. But, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you got a grenade, I guess. Some kind of explosive device. You know, if, if they have explosive devices on them, then, you know, it's not... All I'm saying is that the reason they can't do that is because the lab can't blow up because you need them soon to go back and need to pull out the folder. And right, the yeah. So, there's, there's things that need to happen. So I'm not, I'm not going to beat them up too much about that one. Yeah, so she's like, find me some scissors, find me some pliers. I'm going to hack in this thing. Okay, whatever. Um, and let's get past this. All right, the Europa mission. How oddly rude Adam Soon was to this executive was like... He did it on purpose. Okay, explain this. So sorry, yeah. So he was he was doing that so that he could separate himself from her because he needed to be alone in order to kill Renee. I see. So it was intentional. So he was trying to get himself separated it was kind of a little bit awkward because you're like dang you know uh, you, you know you're rude and i'm leaving so that she would have a reason not to be suspicious of him walking around i guess or mm. to not question him because he just called her out on some stuff it was it was kind of weak sauce i mean you could have probably just they, they had it done perfectly i can't get five minutes after all the money i donated boom and then they, they let him go yeah, they, they didn't need minutes. to have that moment where he was like you know what i'm leaving you now i mean it was kind of a waste of well, like, you know. yeah, a waste of time. That's what you're about to say. It was, right? it was a waste of time and it was a waste of, you know, it was unnecessary because he's already given us the information we need. He needs to get with Renee to, so that he can try to kill her. And he's already given the reason why they should let him. So they don't need to walk down the hall further so that she, he can insult her unless you want to make him more of a bad guy, you know, which wasn't necessary. We already know he's a bad guy. Right. We already know he's a bad guy. Yeah. Okay. So, um. So this part happens. So she's dressed like as I guess Renee's handler, but she's obviously not Renee's handler. And now I know. Now we know why they they made sure that they gave us the line that the chart that the tech chick takes eight hours to recharge. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's necessary. I mean, I, I don't know why the eight hours is important. Well, because she couldn't walk in there. She couldn't walk past them and do all that as someone else, and then also become Renee. She had to save that tech and the charge that that tech would give her for the Renee phase. You see your Romulan ears on that person? Ah, you're right. I just saw that. Yeah. So, so it's that, wasn't it? Wait. Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. This makes no sense. Well, maybe she can change more than once. Maybe the eight hour charge lets her change to as many then phases as she wants. Don't tell us about the eight hours. <laughs> You're wasting know, well, they, our time. They they only mentioned it very slightly at the very beginning of the, of the show. It was not a big thing that they really went into. So why why even have the dialogue when it has no weight at all? They should have never mentioned it because they over explain things that are unnecessary. They wanted to explain why she didn't have Romulan ears all the time, so she could fit into human society. And it just they didn't think you would like, you know, hold on to it throughout the entire show and utilize it as a tool because they sure didn't, you know, because <laughs> they're not thinking about it like that, you know, but on a positive note, I do want to say that I thought this whole next scene was actually rather good. 
Yeah. Uh, the explaining to Renee, the making that personal connection, because you don't know what happens. And even though we knew what was going to happen when Renee comes running out of that room and runs to Dr. Soon, he's like, Dr. Soon, this crazy lady just told me there's a moment where you're like slightly unsure as to which Renee that is. Yeah. You know, I know it's supposed to fool everybody. We knew what it was, but you know, and I thought that was great. You know, now I wonder. Whole, Tell us the chat. Did you know when she came out of the room? Did you know that it was written that it was not Laris? Or is yeah, that of course, us? Because we told them. Well, we told them that's what was going to happen. Okay, so we did. We, I mean, we've mentioned before yeah. that that not Laris was going to be the other Renee. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people were like, I wonder how many people knew that though and were shocked. Not probably not many, honestly. I mean, I think a lot of people were probably shocked. Honestly, because nobody goes in, in depth on it like we do, you know, but so the average viewer was probably like, whoa, what just happened? You know, right. they probably didn't realize that hey, here's a here's a funny question for you. Uh, well, I guess not. Not Laura. So I guess that's what she normally looks like, but she technically can look like anybody. This is the only time where she's looked like somebody else in the show. So I bet a lot of people were super surprised. OK. Yeah. Random minutes. Yes, it was clear. OK, well. That's because you're smart and you watch the show. Thank you. Yeah. Man. So I, I, I don't know. I don't think I, I don't think I uh, agree with you, bro. I think that mm -hmm. if people are watching this show a lot, I think that they knew pretty much immediately that it was probably not. Well, th well, they gave it away. What did they say? They said, uh, you, I'm not going to let you sacrifice yourself for her. You can't control me, Picard. You can't tell me how to live my life. You can't, you don't have the choice. <laughs> Right. So we knew she was going to sacrifice herself. So the question is, is did you know it was her when she ran out of the room? Now, when she started dying, I'm pretty sure we knew who, we knew what had happened. Any reasonable person would have realized, oh, crap, that's that's not Laris. Right. All right. Which I thought was clever the way they did it. The little hand thing, the poison, you know, that's something soon would do. OK, no. Yeah, I mean, the way soon would kill her. That's definitely something soon would do. Soon is not yeah. the problem. Soon is not the problem here. Who's so, the problem? Uh, the the problem is that I feel like that was supposed to be a surprise. And I don't think, I think you're saying plenty of people were surprised. I don't think they were. I think that you're right. They set it up way too quick in advance. Like how else could you have, I mean, not having the conversation about her sacrificing herself? Yeah, not doing that. You yeah, know? they probably could have re rewritten that another way. You're yeah. right. Yeah, we're gonna go. Oh, we're gonna go take care of R Renee. You guys go deal with Adam soon. Yes, right. And then have it come out where they had that whole talk about th the whole speech about you can't tell me how to live my life should have happened as she was dying. Probably, you know, they could right. have actually extended that out a little bit more and had the whole you can't control it. It's not your fault. She could have had that while she was dying. Just have a slower death. Right. Probably right. would have worked out better than we would have been surprised, or at least you know. The average viewer would have been surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to get to that, Daniel. Daniel's Hot Topics, because, uh, yeah, Q's, Q's death scene was actually really good. All right. So, yeah, now Rios is flying the drone. Uh, she gets poisoned, blah, blah, blah. So Rios, they get control over one of the drones. And, of course, the bad drones have the red lights and the good drone. Has I didn't really them. like that whole part. You know why you didn't I like it? I felt like show? it was just, like, unnecessary. Okay, that's why. It was unnecessary. It was unnecessary. The real story is 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 Renee and the swap, right? Right. And these this whole drone backup thing was really just an opportunity to give uh, Seven of Nine Rios and 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 uh, and Rafi something to do. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. See, this is this is the problem when you have uh... that is a problem. I mean, yeah, just I mean, you got to give them something to do. They can't just sit around. I guess so. Yeah. They created a whole side story, which you know, but that's what happens. Yeah. It, and yeah, this was totally unimportant in every way. They should have all went back to Renee's to the compound somehow and had like a different job inside the compound. You right. know, that would make more sense. Yeah, like, like we thought they were gonna do in um <laughs> in the whole like uh fly me to the moon episode where they're like it's gonna be like a heist or whatever. Yeah, we thought that was going to be a lot more like planned and organized with because because like, we got to get everybody in there and everyone has a job. But then in right. that episode, really only one person had a job. Oh, Girardi, yeah, Girardi, and yeah. 
and sort of Picard because he was going to talk to Renee. That's true. Nobody else did anything. Not but really. Nobody else did anything. <clears throat> right. They just they just drank and talked about their feelings. And the crazy part is, really, Picard didn't do much either. I mean, he got hit by a car. He got hit he by a car. Talk to Renee. Right. I, do you think that is what pushed Renee back into the quarantine? I don't know. I mean, if you're about somebody, you see somebody get hit by a car, you're definitely your problems are the least of the of your worries at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So Picard didn't actually talk her into it. He just got hit by a car. He got he got he messed up what was going on. Yeah. Right. He took the hit instead of Renee. Right. Okay. Um. Yeah. But everyone else there did nothing. They all had to be there, but they didn't do anything. <laughs> but everyone else did nothing. Right. All right. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is when not Lawrence is dying. She turns it off and. He said he tells her to look up. So it was a good death scene. A good death scene. It was. Uh, not Laris did a good job. She, um, I think the whole season, um, you know, I, I really wasn't very familiar with um, um, with Orla Brady in most of her roles, but I thought she did a really good job this season. Yeah, she did. You're right. And I'll say it, but you're right. <laughs> I mean, she was she was fine. It's the ears. To be yeah. honest, she was also fine next last season. And this I mean, season. she wasn't much in it. Yeah. I mean, but this season she was in quite a bit of it. And she had some she had some actual acting, real right. acting right. happening this season. Right. And you she's know, done what? fine this whole series. Um yeah. the real and we'll get to the final thoughts at the end here, but there's, you know, God definitely talk about Alice and Pill, you know. But yeah. All right, she has her ears again. Um, never explained why it was a Romulan that went back, but you know, whatever. We never got that, man. I, I, that's one, that's one thing that I thought was a mistake. They didn't, here's what's funny. They could have just made her a human version of, of her. They didn't need to make her a Romulan. When you really think about it, why shouldn't she just be a human? And it looks like Tallinn or looks like Loras. I mean, whatever. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. And I, I, I know why they use her. They use her because... Uh, you know, the actress is under contract or whatever, right? Right, yeah. Um, and that's fine. But yeah, she didn't need to be a, a Romulan. Didn't have to didn't have to play with Canon at all with that. Not at all. It just could have been weird genetics or whatever. I don't know. Right. All right. So soon's back. He's watching his, you know, that he was he's seen that he failed. He's upset. And then uh all of his computer stuff starts to get erased. I don't even know, know why this was was necessary to be honest. Um, I guess so that he couldn't go forward and do more research. Okay. I mean, she deleted all of his research basically. But then they they show us the the con thing, which then I'm like, okay, well, there's the research in hard in hard form, like. Yeah, they, so they just wanted to give Cora whatever her name is like they wanted to give her something to do, man. That's all it is, right? Honestly, we didn't have to see Cora ever again. We didn't need to see her. That was it. She left. She by removing herself from Soong helped stop the future. That's that was it, right? And then you know the fans would have just been like, eh, yeah, she sort of looks like that character for some reason, and that's it. <laughs> that's all we know, right? Instead, we got something totally different. Yeah, it was built from Data's mind or whatever. All right, so this was the Easter egg when he pulls out the um, uh, Project Con, which I thought was cool. Now, it's cool, but why? So it says here, Project Con Confidential Funding Report, June 7th, 1996. Remember we were talking earlier right. about how they confused the eugenic wars? Well, this just shows you. It definitely says 1996. Right. So my question to you is why? Why pull the report out? What does it have to do with the show? Con happened in 96. <laughs> Why? What's it here for? Okay. Hey, so I don't know where my head is, but wild podcast theory. Here we go. Okay. What if they did more than just fix time? What if they motivated a very intelligent, very wealthy man to go forward uh, with research, you know, motivated him in the worst kind of way. Like now he's angry. He's lost everything, right? To go yeah. forward with research that 
And that is the problem we see in the future. It's the return of the augments. And that transwarp conduit is not a Borg Ooh. or species 5951, whatever. It's a it's it's these con people that have been camping out somewhere in Europa or whatever. I don't know. What if what if it's tied <laughs> Why to Why would they need a transwarp drive though? I get what you're saying. We need to think on this a little more, but I'm just like, what, what, what would be the conduit, conduit? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, we saw the creation of a transwarp conduit. What, maybe that's how they're, maybe that's how they're traveling. Maybe, I don't know, man. Okay. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I love how you came, how came with that. In, in, uh, in space seed, when did that ship launch in the nineties, right? It, it launched in 96. So he took control of a DY 100 class interplanetary sleeper ship. He christened the SS Botany Bay, and uh, he set a course outbound from the solar system. Uh, yeah, so they ended up in suspended animation uh, for centuries. And um, yeah, so he, I don't understand. So you tell me why he has this con thing, right? Mm -hmm. But con has gone. It's, he's been gone like, oh, six, almost 30 years, 28 years. He's been in space flying away. So what is Soon doing with this folder? What's the point? So we do know that the other version of Soon. Oh, there's too many Soons. I mean, it's maybe he, no, well, maybe he is, uh, maybe the future has changed a bit. You know, maybe he takes this research and then does something else. I mean, there's only reason they show it. I mean, there's no, I want to say they're intelligent. This is what keeps getting us in trouble. I keep wanting to say they're doing smart things, but then they do dumb things like announce that the cast of TNG is going to be back in the middle of season two, when that clearly should be something that's done after the final episode is played Excuse out. Me. Why do you put that things out? Things are ruining my childhood. They're taking everything that mattered to me and they're fisting it. The oh, look. Oh, oh, hey, look. Oh, here, there's more for you. Okay. So I just don't understand why they uh, they did that. Yeah, that's was, so frustrating. So, we were going to get there, but yeah. So I want to, I want to say, this is what I want to say. That means something. I want to say that means something, just like I want to say the time police guy who was in the episode means something oh, to the future. Jesus. Just like I want to say that that Guinan and her crazy stuff means something, just like I want to say this means something. But the problem is they may just be Easter eggs. The Romulan stuff, I want to say it means something. It just may be dumb Easter eggs for fans. And let me tell you something, Easter eggs for the sake of Easter eggs in Star Trek is not good Yeah, this, because it yeah. confuses people. Yeah, this is, okay, no offense. This isn't Star Wars. Star Wars is fantasy wrapped in science fiction. Yeah. This, St St Star Trek is pure science fiction, which means you can't have Easter eggs just to have them. Now, if it's an right. innocuous thing like a, the street address or the color of a light, fine. But these kind of things, these are these are Easter eggs and there are fans out there. that are like, okay, now I need to connect the dots. Yes. They're potential plot points. And it's not that they're Easter eggs. They're right. potential plot points. Right. Now here's the thing. Uh, uh, Archmage just said the con thing was supposed to be a cute reference to Eric soon in the same way. He said, I'm going into cybernetics at the end of enterprise. Okay. But I'm sorry though. You can't, I know I understand that, but it's not, it's, <sighs> See that was see in the way they did that. By the way, there's more gravity here. The way they did that in Enterprise, that was a good Easter egg, because it had no bearing at all on the story. Right? You knew you knew you weren't going to see that character ever again, and he was and he said that as a as an as a an homage to the 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 soon he ends up being, you know, in in TNG. This is different though. Because this was, <laughs> it's completely different. It's the main character. There's another season. We know we can see that character again. We know Brent Spiner is going to be in, in in season three. It's just a completely different thing. Um, And he just dealt with, like, ah, Jesus. I, it's really hard for me to verbalize this. But, yeah, you're right. This is probably just a stupid Easter egg. But the problem is, this this has too many connections. So if it's just an Easter egg, then it's, then it's disappointment. There's no, there's no significance between the two. 
there's always been some implied connection because the names are so close to each other. But Soong did not create, he was not on the project that created Kong. You know, right. it's, they're not connected. That's what, that's what, ugh, that's what bothers me about this. Yeah. Stuff. So in Enterprise, when he was like all about the augments, why was that? It really is because the names are similar. That's it. Just because the names are similar. It's it's and Roddenberry. They, it was it was it was a guy he served with, man. So so there was, that that was a reason for them to bring back Brent Spiner because he played a character that had a similar last name to uh, Khan's, you know, soon. And they're like, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna make him like really about the augments in some way, right? So soon, right? Noonien right. Singh. Uh, uh, Khan Noonien Singh and Soong, Dr. Soong, who created Data, right? Right. Okay. Just there's, there's two totally different stories. Right, different but, characters, not connected to each other. But the ancestors of the, the guy who created Data are really in to, apparently into augment and biology. Right. It's like they, they've tried to connect them in some way. Like it's all been, but it's not really like, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to connect it. I don't know. But let me just tell you, him holding up that folder does nothing because the year is 2024. Makes no sense. Nothing happens afterwards unless the future has changed in some way in season three that we don't know. And Picard doesn't realize, oh, Soong did something. He created another con. And then I don't know. It's possible. Yes. But, may, but maybe it's just maybe it is just what they've been doing all along and it's nothing. And that's what is frustrating as a Star Trek fan because right. if you do something this big, if you bring back a time cop to be an FBI agent, the same actor, and you don't make a connection, the fact that he was on Voyager, and then you have Khan project that soon has just been defeated. And now he's like, I've got this folder. I mean, come on, guys. It can't be just a nod and a wink. Right. right? Yeah. Am I wrong? Yeah. Too many nods and winks. Too many nods. Too can't many. do it. You can't nod and wink that away, guys. Come okay. On. All right. So let's go back to this. Um, <laughs> just get rid of that thing. All right. I hate so, it when cool things don't see their way through, you know? Right. Because it's a cool thing. Right. Like, yeah. Like like a ton of stuff that, that's happened this season that hasn't. Oh, that's a cool idea. Nothing. Nothing, nothing happens. Yeah. All right. Cora's in a, light, in a Barnes and Noble, it looks like, or something. And. She gets a message. Oh, here's the part, guys. You know what's funny is this is literally halfway through the episode. So when I messaged you yesterday and I was like, I'm at, I'm going to bed. Adios. Yeah. It's halfway through. And she gets a message from a mysterious traveler. Come to this street address. And, you know, she has no reason to fear anybody that's looking for her. Uh, so she goes to the street address. <laughs> what if it was like her dad, right? I mean, she gets like some mysterious message about. It. I mean, I would if I was her, I would instantly assume that it was Adam Stone. Right. It wouldn't even be a question. All right. So she goes there, and this smug. <laughs> I mean, let's just take it from listen. Let's just take it from Wesley. Okay. Can we just do it from Wesley right now? Oh. Uh... Let's just do it from Wesley, okay? So here's the thing. Wesley Crusher, it's okay. It's okay to bring him into this show. Yeah. But the problem is this serves no point. And in fact, right. it goes on to take kind of a really cool idea and then just makes it not cool anymore. Right. It ruins so it. basically what Wesley tells her is, and the, she, the fact that she understands it's a recruitment thing before him even saying it's a recruitment thing really irritates me. Yeah. So, but he's basically asking her questions or, you know, and he, and he, he says, we're the people who send the supervisors out. Oh, they should have done that. Which means now we have solved the, the old assignment earth mystery of who were those people from a thousand light years away from a planet that's, that's hidden that you'll never find. Okay. Because they don't want to be found. Well, apparently guys, it's the travelers. It's the creepy travelers. Oh my god! It's, it's the it's the travelers. That's okay. who that planet is. Apparently, Here's and the they're problem. in charge of making sure time stays on track. I guess. Yeah. Apparently. Um, I mean, I guess we didn't know a lot about the travelers. I mean, I guess you can do that. But frankly speaking, it's it was kind of a really cool notion that they could have done something really cool with. 
right? Instead of a throwaway and, line. And now they just threw it away. They just totally wrecked that cannon. One of so the oldest we'll, mysteries in Star Trek. One of the so oldest. That, yeah. So that Wesley Crusher could have a cameo. Oh. Because there's no reason to take this character as a traveler to to make her a traveler. What did she do? What did she do that was so special? Nothing. What did she do? Is she like Nothing. incredibly intelligent? Like Wesley was like a was like a genius kid or something. Right. What has she done? Other than survive. Yeah, I guess that maybe it's because she has to be out of time so that she doesn't ruin things. But he but he gave her the okay. option to stick around and be useless useless or come with him. So is that what they do? So yeah, so is that what they do? Is every time that they like got a fixed time, they just make him a traveler? I don't think so. Right. But then that again, he gave her the option to stay. And have a boring life. Right. Or so what become he should have said was, you know, you don't really belong here. You know, he should have tried to appe- appeal yeah. to her, 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 you know, goodness and be like, you know, you can't, you really don't belong here. You can't really be here. You're out of time. Well, what you he should have done, Brian, is he should have taken her to the planet to become a future supervisor as opposed to make her a traveler of one of him. You see what I'm saying? It's like Gary Seven was this was a agent of, I guess, the travelers now that would go for, and change time. What makes her so special that she can be a traveler? You see, and can the travelers just make anybody else be a traveler? Which is kind of now that has this powers across space and time. Did they? So we don't. There's still things we don't understand, and I just don't think they really thought this through before they made that connection, and. They wanted to get, I mean, listen, there are people who who really wanted to see what happened to, to Wesley Crusher. And there's no problem with that. But it just it just was an unnecessary, once again, an unnecessary thing that they threw into the show for the sake of of fan service. And it may have done more damage than good. I mean, yeah, we do get to know what happened to, to Wesley. Fine. Which is good. But in the we process. We don't really know what happened to him, but yeah, he showed up. Right. In the process of that, we answered the uh, a very long, you know, question, a question that was asked in 1962 or whatever. We answered that question in a very unsatisfactory, very unceremoniously five minute way. There yeah, been, there could have been a exactly. whole it, there could have been an entire season dedicated to this. It could have been a show. Yeah, you're right. It could have been, been a whole show. thing. Now it's in the future. It's just ruined it for any other. And that's why you got to be careful with, with, with solving Star Trek mysteries, you know, with, with, with five second lines, you got to be careful because you're taking away potential storylines for future shows, you know, as well, because there's only so many threads that you have to go on to stay in Canon. So it was just kind of a waste. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It just wasn't, it was just kind of, Hey, it's Wesley. Okay. Um, Oh, he's a traveler. Yep. Still. Oh, he's going to make her a traveler. Why? Oh, wow. Yeah. Gary Seven is tra- they're travelers. Oh. And now that guy that was the weird traveler that was on the ship, what was he doing? Was he? And then you go back to TNG and you're trying to figure that out. And you're like, okay, I guess he was looking for Wesley the whole time. Okay. That's all I got to say. Yeah. I mean, it's just a waste. It's opinion. a waste. It's not that you're right. It's not that it's good or bad. It's yeah. that it's a waste. And in it my didn't opinion, make Picard- yeah, go ahead. In my opinion, when it's when it's a waste, I feel like it was a bad decision. Then, if you're it sitting didn't in the make, go ahead. It didn't make Picard season two so much better that it was necessary to just, you know, squash that little cool thing. Right, right. Yeah. It didn't. And when he teleported it out, he didn't teleport out as the traveler effect. He used the he used the a, a T, the TNG beam out. It was like a standard yeah beam yeah. Which I know it's a nitpicky thing, but gee, I mean, if you're yeah. a traveler. If you're a traveler and you, you know, those things are important, you know, use the smoke effect. You know, I don't understand why you wouldn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that's the problem. The problem with it is not the Easter egg. It's not the, you know, the little, you know, cameo by Will Wheaton as, as Crusher. It's not even letting us know what happened to Crusher. We probably already assumed that he was, um, a traveler still because there was a deleted scene from a movie where it showed him back in Starfleet, but that didn't really happen. So, by canon rules, he's still a traveler. But yeah, connecting, we never, the tra- we, yeah. connecting the travelers to the supervisors is a waste. And so I would argue that it was bad because there's an opportunity there 
of a mystery that's been that had been on Trekkie's mind since they've watched TOS in the 60s, and they've considered that option of who they were and where they're from. And there's videos out there and entire essays people have written up on Reddit and other social medias trying to explain where and what and when when it comes to the travelers. And this is the answer you've given us. Five minutes, the, tra- uh, the sorry, the supervisors. Five minutes, the travelers are in charge of the supervisors. The end. Holy crap. Right. That's that's pretty much it. That's a bummer. So that's why we were bummed out because it was Wesley instead of uh, the rest of the TNG crew. But Yeah, so I went to bed because I realized that the reason why the TNG uh, music came in right there was not for the crew, was for Wesley. I was like, eh, yeah. all right. I went to sleep and I woke, woke up in the morning and finished it. All right, let's keep rolling. All right, and yeah, blah blah blah. Hey, come be a traveler, blah blah blah. Yeah, of course, she wants to be a traveler. <laughs> they beam out. Who doesn't want to be a traveler? All right, they're back in the mansion now. They are considering the fact that they're stuck in the 21st century, and this is when we get Rafi and Seven making out. Um, either Seven's a really bad kisser, or she just wasn't into it. Um, I don't know. It's it was it was a uh, look. They they you know the way things are going these days, they just had to have that in there. So. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. They're not a believable couple, in my opinion. No, they're not. They don't have any chemistry. Um, yeah. Picard, this is cool. What happens right now, though? Yes, Picard takes the skeleton key and he puts it back because, just so you know, those flashbacks—they're actually—they actually haven't happened yet. Right. It's the future. Right. I know, so it's weird because the way the flashbacks are framed, normally flashbacks happen before the time. Right. And. The way everyone's dressed and everything in his flashbacks, it seems like it's a long, long time ago. Um, right. Even though it's in the, it's actually far in the future from now. And so for a minute there, I was forgetting that they're in the past and those flashbacks yeah. are technically taking place chronologically in the future, right? That's true. You're right. And so the key that he found earlier in the show when they were running around the catacombs is critical to the, what he needs to find as a boy. So he had the choice of whether to put that key back in the hiding place where he found it or not to, because if he had not put the key back there, then he would have never been able to let his mom out of the room. Which is why in TNG, his mom grows old. Was that? No, no. So what, what, what the point is, the point is, is that Picard found it earlier in the show and he took it. He knew where the hiding place was. Right. Because he was a kid already, right. but he put it back. He made the choice to con- to be the Picard he always was instead of change history and not go through that torment because that's what made him who he was. And then he made the choice to change who he was now. And that's why we see the rest of the show the way it is. See what I'm saying? He, he actually decided to become more open now that he's old, but he wanted to be that same guy, which I'm grateful for, that he was the whole time we knew him in TNG right. in his whole life. So he puts the key back. And that's when Q is like, oh, good. You've learned your lesson. Yeah. You hear his voice. Yeah. Listen, I do love, um, I love the interactions with Q and McCard, but I got to say, uh, what lesson did Picard learn? Well, he learned, he learned that um, it's okay to take chances and that he doesn't need to push everybody away because of what happened to his mom. And if, and if you go back, he pushed everybody away. He pushed Beverly away. He pushed, uh, the, the girl from Cup- uh, Cupid away. He pushed every love interest he's had. Vosh, I think it Vosh was his name. He's pushed everybody away and he pushed Laris away. Uh, he won't allow himself to be loved by anyone. So Q didn't want him dying alone the way he was going to die alone. Right. And this ended up kind of almost being more about Q. What Q wanted was also to be loved. And then right. he got his love from Picard. Right. Which was, which was wonderful. Yes, John Delancey is 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 amazing, and I'll tell you guys, Patrick Stewart. Uh, Patrick Stewart watched that he hadn't seen this episode until this morning, and he woke up this morning and he watched this episode, and he said he cried uh, during that moment, and he just had nothing but wonderful things to say about John Delancey and how he was almost jealous of what a great actor he is, which is huge coming from Patrick Stewart because he's a great actor. Yeah, Patrick Stewart is, yeah, yes, yeah, he is a great actor. Um, yeah, and I got to say, uh, this moment was really, really good. I don't have any. Yeah, I, was, I, I loved it. I really yeah, loved, I, have nothing to complain I about loved it. Q. 
it wraps up Q's character so well, Brian. Yeah. I, um, suffering, like, I don't want to say the word suffering, but like having to deal with like a lot of the problems this season, it's almost worth it to see a really good ending to a character that I have loved since I was like 19. So yeah. for 20 plus years, this has been one of my favorite characters. You guys go to our channel and look at how many damn Q videos we've made, guys. Like, we love yeah. Q. We, we love Q. Q. We love Q and we love the Borg as villains. Uh, we think that there's a lot of layers to to these characters that are seemingly very simple to understand, but they have so many layers. Um, so get, getting to see him go out in this fashion with Picard hugging him is really very emotional. I mean, it is. You got to remember, Q was there in the first TNG episode, and he right. was there at the last TNG episode. Right. I mean, Q is so Star Trek. It's. I would argue that maybe Star Trek doesn't do as well as it does. It isn't the. It isn't the thing that we love incredibly now today. Without John Delancey's Q and the integral part he played in TNG to make that show so much better, you know. So I mean, this character, the way he goes out, the hug, the. I mean, listen. I, I, they could have done a lot of things better in this show, but I will tell you the way they wrapped up Q, they couldn't have done it any better than the way they did it. And I had to go on and go on, online and look, you know, uh, we've never seen Picard hug another person. Never. Not once. Interesting. We've seen people. Well, that hug, shows his change. That we've shows seen people his change. Hug Picard. We've seen him return embraces. We've never seen him go for the embrace like that. Well, that's, that just shows that he changed. And it actually shows the growth in this character, which, you know, like they, they, they achieved what they went out to do. And regardless of how they got there, I mean, it, we do see a change in growth in Picard. This was a better season than season one. And we do have a good reason to believe season three will be better than season two. And we can talk about that more. Too. By the way, Raffi almost ruined it for me when she, when she was like, I'm going to kill this mother. Ah, stop Raffi. Yeah. Please stop. <laughs> It's like everybody, well, you can see everybody else is like, yeah, yeah, he needs to get his home. So can you chill out? Come Thanks. Come on, dude. You're like, like, you're supposed to be smart. Like, if you're, if you're smart, then you know you can't kill the guy that's going to send you home. So, well, you know, it's, try to kill a god. I love the line he actually uses there. It's like, you can try to kill. You can try to kill me. You know, she obviously can't kill him. Right. So. Um, now, this, this, is, this is the moment. John Delancey did so good. He was clearly, I think the actual per play, uh, actor was very emotional here too, because you could see it on his face. Yeah. In this moment, I did have me, w with all the anger I had with not getting what I felt like I wanted this, this season, this moment with his face and when Picard said, you're not going to die alone, was like, okay, cool. Yeah. Q. Yeah, no, for you. real. It was good, dude. It was nice. Yeah. Um, that was... Like you said, everything else may have been worth it just to get this moment. Right. Because Q's not going to die alone. He's going to die with his favorite pet. And well, he why, why you got to stop seeing pet? I hate it. I know that. I know you say it like that, but it's not, it's more than that, man. I mean, it is, but it, 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 he did say, you're one of my favorites. He didn't say you're my favorite. He said, you're one of my favorites. Well, he can't leave Janeway out, bro. That's true. I guess he loves Janeway. <laughs> okay. So but um, Picard is his go-to. Yeah, so this is a good moment. Now, this is the moment that after I went to bed last night and left Wesley Crusher standing on Alameda Avenue with Cora and messaged um, <laughs> Shane, I'm going to bed. I'm out. Um, this is I get to this and I'm like, wait, how much time is left in the in the episode? Okay, wait, 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 wait. There's uh there's still about 20 minutes left. Almost 20 minutes left in the episode, and there's gonna Q is going to send him home. Okay. There's still a chance we see the TNG crew, right? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that. I was and thinking it could still happen. I listened to the whole soundtrack. The, the, the first song we hear the dun, 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 is on the Traveler's track, which we, we, which we got at the top of the episode pretty much. And the very last two tracks specifically the last track um, on the soundtrack, which we're going to hear at the end of this episode also ends with the da, 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 da. 
And the beginning of that track is literally the first contact theme song. It is. That was weird. So that track is the first contact theme song, and it tails off at the very end and goes da 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 da. Right? Yep. And you're like, okay. So we got Wesley. He was part of TNG. They played this little thing at the end. Okay, cool. When he beamed out. But there's a whole song that comes from first contact <laughs> and ends with the TNG theme music. And it and we still have 20 minutes left in this episode. And that song hasn't happened yet. I was like, wait a minute. It's still possible that they're not morons and we are going to see TNG. <laughs> and this is me, guys. I'm like, I'm just going to visualize. Clicking, 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 clicking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay all right jaborgi she looks weird whatever cool all right they have a problem they they work the difference out picard makes her make seven finally the captain of the ship okay field commission i guess an admiral can just make anybody starfleet okay i guess we're just rocking through this i guess yeah i'm sorry this this was, this was my intention well I, I know but you're going through all this okay stuff. all right all right let's back up a little bit. okay <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. Just just a mat. Just a, see hear me see my face. Hear this trepidation in my voice. When we get to the end. Uh-huh. Okay. I want you to understand when that music started playing. I got up. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Let's go. Now we're back in the future. The Jaborgi and the big giant uh La Ross La Serena, I'm assuming. And he's having a conversation with Jaborgi. Shane? Yeah, he, he stops the countdown. He stops like, the Stop. countdown. Right. One second. Right. No countdown. Right. Okay. Somebody Jaborgi. turns around and says, where's Captain Rios? He's like, shut up and just listen to what I'm telling you. Just shut up. <laughs> just you shut your mouth and turn just around. Just shut up and tell the rest of the fleet to allow her to assimilate. Like, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something. As, as the captain of the ship, be like, oh, well, he's clearly compromised. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> just Cards listen. lost it. I understand they don't have time to go through, like, explain. And that's the problem. You don't have time to actually explain to the rest of that fleet. that, Or to the audience. Or to the audience <laughs> to as to, what, as to what's going on. So you just tell them to do it immediately. And the reason you don't have time is because there's five episodes of this season that you completely wasted on nothing. On yeah. nothing. No, you're right. So you're, you're trying right. in the first and the last 20 minutes of this episode to make it work. And here's the problem. There's so many, there's so many little um, issues that arise the second he just says, just do that. First off, the person communicating that information should be like, wait a minute. The other, you know, 150 or so ships with their individual captains should be like, wait a minute. A lot of people should be like, we need more than just a, a, not even your voice, a literal text message saying to relax. Well, it's funny because they said they need an answer. And then finally, seven of them is like, answer them or they're going to blow us up. And it's like, okay, that's all it took was one of them to go, yeah, we're good. This is what <laughs> I would have done as a writer. Uh, fleet wide hail. Right? Uh, 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 fleet, this is Admiral Picard. Stand down. We are dealing with the situation. Or something like that. Right. But they couldn't do that because there was only 20 minutes to wrap up the entire season. So really this last episode that really Q probably should have uh, said goodbye in episode nine at the very least. And right. then they should have had this entire episode to flesh out. I mean, in the last 20 minutes, we have a galactic something we don't really know trans warp thing that, that's going to destroy most of the alpha quadrant. And it happens in just a few minutes and we still don't really understand, you know, it's like, Whoa, where did that come from? And it's so, you know, it's Galactic very odd. Right? Ending event. Which they seem to have to have every time you have the ending of, of whether it's discovery or Picard, there has to be some sort of galactic destroying thing that occurs. Right. right. You have to say it right. You know, galactic ending event. We can, we can just end it, you know, or we can, you have the <laughs> you can have the continuation episode you were supposed to have because John Luke Picard, Patrick Stewart said the climax is in season three, not season two. Yeah, I explain guess. that one. Well, he had, he hadn't even seen the episode yet, so how would he know? <laughs> he's he's a, he's a crazy guy running around. He's, oh no no great, wait wait till you see it. Picard actually goes for five seasons. We're all good. Yeah, 
Um, oh, he did say something about that too, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. And Akiva Gozman's like, no, it ends it. No, 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 we're not. Yeah. Ori- orig- originally, uh, sorry, my Adobe's going crazy. Originally, Akiva Gozman was like, oh, we're, I mean, we're going to do it for as long as uh, Patrick wants to do it. Patrick was like, five seasons. And he's like, no, we're ending at three. <laughs> no, three, three, three. No, no, we, I, we, I know what I said before, that we're ending at three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can only wheel you around so many times in so many scenes. <laughs> Not going to get any better. <laughs> let's just put him in the cabin's chair for the whole season. Nobody would care. Put him in the cabin's chair from the bridge of the Enterprise. And let's get this thing done. Don't even move him. Yeah, he's just he's in the chair. All right, so he's uh, he's talking to Borgie and she is. Mm. Nikki just commented here. I think you guys will like Strange New Worlds. Oh, Nikki, don't go anywhere because right after this is over, we're breaking down Strange New Worlds and we're going to tell you everything. Oh we yeah, yeah, we're finishing Picard. Then we're going right into Strange New Worlds, and that is, right. you guys, that is such a monumental shift of, d- of difference for me. It's 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 incredible. You have to see this yeah, review. We'll talk more about it. Um, I do love um a couple things about this shot. I like the way they made the black look like the um, like the circuit board thing. Oh yeah, that, that was different. I mean, they they upgraded her, and I thought that was good. By the way, I've actually I made a lot of board graphics, and I always used the circuit board kind of uh, style in my graphics, yeah. which wasn't really a you know a thing in in the other in Voyager and TNG. It wasn't circuit board or whatever. So when I saw this, I'm like, all right, all right, some designer had the same thought I did. Nice. Um. But her headpiece looked a little weird. I guess I guess Allison Pill does not look doesn't look right without hair. I'm, yeah, they probably were like, she's like, look, I'm not shaving my head for like five seconds here or ten or whatever, a minute on screen. Right. So it was like CGI or whatever. They couldn't get the bald cap on or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, she explains that there is a some kind of galactic ending event coming and um she needs the fleet. And they're all going to group up together and turn their shields on. And Something you could have done in the first episode, by the way, if we didn't want to have a season. <laughs> right. Instead of taking over the ship. Yeah. I feel like she could have just explain this like immediately. Yeah. But, but you know, it wouldn't, I mean, you obviously can't do that because then you don't have a show. And that, but, that, but that's, but that's lazy writing. Okay. Anyways. it's Is it lazy writing or is it, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, she was the catalyst, right? So you had to have some sort of misunderstanding. It would have been better played out as like a misunderstanding. Uh, and it's a little easier to find logic through reasoning after the events already occurred. I'll give them that. Right. Um, hindsight is twenty twenty. So maybe it's just a case of she made a mistake. I mean, dude, coming into the ship with her mask on, like if she just came into the ship without her mask and it was clearly Girardi, I'm like, all right, hold the phone. Don't attack her. Let's, let's, it just would have given some too much away to be able to tell the story. I know you would have had a completely different story if that was the case. But that's but but that's why if you can explain how to immediately solve the problem, then it's we're just going to assume that they made a mistake. I think the Borg are capable of making a mistake. Okay, can't we can't we just call it that? Because otherwise, I mean, I'm I'm taking this from the point of view as a writer. If you want Jurati to be your board queen at the end and there's something happening at the beginning, you can't show her. Right. The else it gives it away. I mean, we figured out that Jurati was going to be the board queen at the end uh, in episode, I think, three. Episode three. Yeah. But, you know, still, it's supposed to be a surprise. Okay. Um, that would also explain why why they spent so much time together, her and Picard in, like, the Chateau. Yeah. And why she was playing that music and all that stuff. Is, that now it makes sense. But that, So that... We now uh, the problem I have with that is that we don't know that, so all that stuff happened and we like had all these theories because we don't know that Picard has told her all these things. Right. We only find out at the end that he told. He's like, oh yeah, I told her all these things. Like, uh, why uh, do you guys just tell us this stuff? Yeah, you wasted why, three you know? episodes on flashbacks and you couldn't show us five minutes of that, dude. <laughs> or just you know, th- show us that because there was so much wasted time. If you're going to have important things happen. Show us those things. I think the big problem with Picard season two is that they did not have, is, is, even though they had 20 producers on every episode, they did not have one person just looking over the whole thing and going, okay, does it all make sense? Right. Yeah. 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 You so know, I, I was looking at our video we made and it showed, and I was looking at the IMDb. When you said 20 producers, I'm like, before I, 
I actually thought to myself, because Shane sent me, you know, uh, the script, and I'm like, uh, before I actually put that in the video, I should probably go look to make sure he's right. You know, maybe nice. maybe that. Shane looked at the wrong section of IMDb. Yeah. So I went to go look. Maybe for a minute there, because like that's twenty sounded like outlandish. That's insane. Mm -hmm. So I want to make not that Shane doesn't make mistakes like this, but just in case, I don't want to say that and then like the there comments go. lambast us, right? Yeah. So Good I catch. go to IMDb to check out the producers. There are twenty damn producers. <laughs> And two writers, <laughs> 20 producers and two writers for this show. And you're like, you guys have this backwards. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's like, and, imagine if there are 20 foremen and like two workers and they're all just standing around the same hole. They're like, dig, dig faster. No, dig that way. No, dig this way. <laughs> dig up, dig down, dig left, dig right. Yeah. I, that's the problem. I, I mean, I'm assuming that it, it does feel like they just kind of like, and I do, I recall Patrick Stewart saying something like, yeah, I'm in the writer's room. It's very exciting. And you you, you just don't know what's going to happen in the next thing. I remember him saying something like that. No, they really didn't know what was going to happen from episode to episode. Because I think they were just like stream of thought writing through the whole thing. Like, like just like, oh, yeah, they'll do this and now do this. But at the end, you need to have someone check your work and just make sure it all made sense. Yeah. You know, this, this was Picard right here. <laughs> There's one writer, and there's all the, the producers. Do, 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 do. Poor Jose. Because <laughs> there's so many things that they could have looked at that would have just just ma really made things make more sense. And you needed somebody with a critical eye to go, well, you know, why why did they do that? Or why would you do that? Or what's the motivation? You know, there could have been, they needed a Feige kind of watching the whole thing. Right, and that's the question. Um, you got to ask yourself, what are all these producers doing if not a single one of them is considering the whole, the whole story. I mean, they're doing different things. I know Metallus was more focused on season three. Yes. I know Goldman was doing season two. Um, I would be curious. I, I would love to hear or be a fly in the wall and just be like, okay, Hey guys, let's, let's throw this in. I, I have a feeling that it's a bunch of people who are afraid to speak their mind. That, you know, when, when somebody comes up with a bad idea and they're in charge, people want to keep their jobs. And so like, yeah, great idea. Uh -huh. You know, instead of, ah, that doesn't really work. You know, maybe there's a lot of that going on. You know, they need a couple of real Trekkies in the room that, that understand like the things, yeah, and they, they well, you know, that doesn't make sense. Or why do that? They That's need why a Kevin Feige is so good. Cause Kevin Feige, Feige's job is not threatened and he, and he is a fan of the, of the content that he creates. So he can go. Yeah, it's not going to work, guys. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they need to have one person, and ideally, it should be Goldsman or it should be um, Metallus, who actually say, "Okay, I am the master of making sure all of it makes sense." You know, I know they got to shoot it. I know they got to direct it, and, and it depends. Like, they might be writing scripts while they're already shooting the season, so that could be also part of the problem. And now they have logic issues where they have to try to make future episodes fit into stuff they've already shot, so they don't waste money. So there's lots of things that can happen that can go wrong. Hey, you want to save money? I, I got all kinds of effects shot you could have cut out of this season and saved a lot of money that weren't totally, completely yeah. unnecessary. I mean, yeah, but that's that's part of the issue. So we don't really know how they do it, but two writers isn't enough. Yeah, I watched um, uh, Multiverse of Madness, and you can tell when what? this Doctor Strange movie. No, I know. When... When did you watch that? It like came out today. Yeah, I saw it a couple of days ago. Oh, tricky. All right. Yeah, I don't want to get into how I saw it. I just well, say I, I don't think it. you should tell anyone now that I just realized what you just said. Yeah, come on. Okay, let me finish. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but you can tell that Feige is taking. He's taking. At least, you know, he's not as involved as he was in Iron Man, right? right. He's definitely. He's still there, but you can tell that when 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 Sam Raimi, which is another Marvel fan, wanted to make this movie, he's like, "Okay, do your thing." You know, I'll comment on the finished product. But there are parts of it that don't uh -huh, that are definitely not up. A lot of the stuff is really cool, but there are parts of it that are definitely not up to the Feige standard. And Feige admitted that he was taking a step back to focus on other stuff while this was happening because because the next phase is so important to the company. 
Well, and, and in same in the same regard, Goldsman was finishing out season two, and he's not there for season three. So I don't know if he maybe had the same. And he's also working on Strange New Worlds. So there was kind of like, you know, maybe he wasn't watching the shop the way he should. Right, right. And so, so you know, now you got to ask yourself, what about the other eighteen producers? So. <laughs> A lot of people are producers in name. They don't really necessarily produce. Right. Mango. That's a credit. That's the answer. All right. So, um, yeah. So now, now there's, there's this event going on. There's this big, giant, huge black hole, fiery black hole thing that is developing as she explains. So that, I'm sorry. So, yeah. Look, thank you. Is it a black hole? What is it? Do we know what it is? Well, whatever it is, it has an event horizon and it's okay. forming. Right? So it's they we find out later it's a trans warp conduit. We find out later it was the birth of a trans warp conduit, which yeah. they use the term birth, which is weird yeah. because they're created, not birth. They're right. created. And when they say birth, it, when you say something like birth, it sounds like, well, with the birth of a black hole, the, the birth like of it's a organic. Warp yeah, it's, like it's an organic thing, but we know that trans warp conduits are not organic. We know that. Right. Right. So that was the that was the other problem and it looked like it was humongous humongous like it looked like it just took up light years of space did it not it looked gigantic like a huge it looked when they showed it on a map world. of the alpha quadrant did not it looked humongous right so then when we when we actually are faced with it and it's shooting its little beam at the uh at those tiny fleet of ships it 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 felt something felt really off with that like it didn't make sense Right. What? So when you make a trans warp conduit, does does it like shoot out this ridiculous amount of energy in a general direction? Does that happen? I mean, the, the Borg did a lot of those things, and I don't remember that part of the Delta Quadrant being destroyed. Right. That, so that, I'm not yeah. sure. Didn't they make like a whole network of trans? Yeah, and they went right up to the Gamma Quadrant. Right, and no, and nothing was none of those other none of those other solar systems were destroyed or anything. So maybe they shouldn't have called it a trans warp conduit unless. They're bringing the Borg back, which is something we could talk about. Or, or, and I know you would disagree with me, but it's also possible that it's species eight, five, no, whatever. I mean, we don't know if they create con transwarp conduits. No, but the they, tra time... they travel. They travel, but they can also travel in the conduits. Well, what what I'm saying is, is the only species that we have ever heard of that that make transwarp conduits are the Borg. Right. So we, I mean, maybe other people can travel through them, like Voyager did, but. You know, but all, the only ones that create them are the Borg. So it's got to be Borg. And if you create a trans warp conduit, don't you also need a hub? I mean, I don't know. I'm not getting the specifics. I mean, they're definitely not being specific because we don't even understand what it was. And we didn't get enough time to really understand what was happening. It felt very jarring. And I know they're going to take this into season three because uh, what do you call it? Jaborgi? Is that what Jaborgi. you're calling her? Jaborgi? Jaborgi is going to stand guard over that thing now that yeah. they're part of the uh, Federation. Yeah, she's called herself a Guardians of the Gate, which is one of the tracks on the soundtrack. And then when she mm -hmm. said Guardians of the Gate, it like played a little TNG jingle. And I'm like, what the hell does that have to do with TNG? The it's like the composer it, was trying to tie into the show. It's like the composer is now just giving us a bunch of TNG sort of like the rest. By the way, the rest of the soundtrack has none of this. But yeah. this episode, for some reason, for uh, th uh, three out of the four main tracks used, this episode ends with a TNG jingle, and you're like, "What? Why?" It made sense with the rest of the Crusher, fine. Yeah, but any other time you use this music, it has z it, no bearing at all. And there's no reason to introduce the TNG theme music. It's right. all right. Anyways, so yeah, so she's so yeah, so they do the ship thing. Oh, well, we do get to uh, one of the ships is not properly calibrated, and they call that ship the Excelsior. Oh, and who answers that? Who answers that call, Shane? It's Aldor. Yes. Why the hell is a cadet answering the call? Dog, I don't want to go there. No, we have. Because they to needed go to find because it's because they we needed have to, to show go him. there, Shane. We they have to. to show him. Because Q, that was Q's surprise. And so a, a cadet has to be the one answering the answer. I don't know, man. Because they don't need things to make sense. They just want the fans to react appropriately. And that's one of the problems with Star Trek right now. Like, wh where did Elnor come from? What ship was he on? He was on the Saratoga, right? 
when was, the time travel occurred? Uh, apparently, he was on the Excelsior. He was with Rafi. Right. Rafi's on the Saratoga. I don't know, dude. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Let's let I'm sorry. The, I'm sorry. I'm saying the wrong word. I was in the Navy, <laughs> the Saratoga. He's on the uh... Excelsior. No, no, that's 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 uh, that's Patrick Stewart's thing, Excelsior. He's on the Stargazer. Oh my goodness! No, 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 no. That ship that he's on right now is the Excelsior. Right, but they're on the Stargazer. Rafi's on the Stargazer. Right, right. She came to the Stargazer, so she was on another ship first. When though, before the time, before, before the time, time jump. Or, yeah. So before time jump, she came over. No, she didn't. No, she talked to them on a view screen. She wasn't actually on the Stargazer. So Q put her back on the Stargazer. Right. All right. Instead of but Eleanor, he did not. But Eleanor, he did not. Okay, so we could have a big fan surprise. Okay, I got it. Go ahead. But the fan surprise doesn't make any sense. I don't. I hate it when you get fan surprises that don't make sense. Because but, all right. they call the ship because their shields are out of harmonics or whatever. Insert techno babble here. And the cadet is answering the phone. What? <laughs> yeah, it's just, you know, they should have just put him on the ship and had him walk in. They should he should have just walked in from somewhere. They should they should have had someone else answer either. the phone, and in the background, maybe they show Eleanor. And he turns around or something like that. Yeah, like, that would have been kind of cool. Oh, the harmonics are in place, Captain. And they're like, and she's like, Eleanor? <laughs> right. You could have you could have had a moment like that. Anyways, it's fine. Whatever. It's Whatever. The, Eleanor's on. the captain of the ship now, guys. All right. Yeah, forget about it. Move it on. So, so seven of here. nine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and so seven and nine does get a field commission here. I thought this was sort of cool. Well, yeah, but he also she also gets a field commission and like here's a ship. I'm not sure that that is normal. But uh, okay, <laughs> it can't be normal. <laughs> That's, <laughs> hey, you're not Starfleet. Go ahead. Although that is what happened in the Kelvin movie when they're like. Oh, oh shit, with Kirk. Hey, Kirk, uh, you were just a cadet, but now you can be captain. Didn't you just do the Kobayashi Maru? Yeah, jump in the captain's chair. Why yeah, not? didn't you just do the Kobayashi Maru and <laughs> cheat? And you're technically not supposed to be here because you're on yeah. suspension. But I'm gonna make you my number one. Why not? And yeah. you, and and you're gonna be right underneath Spock right now. Yeah. So when I that, die, Spock's going to have to adopt you as his number one because that's the rules. And then when he <laughs> freaks out and says and attacks you because you are literally because he's because Kirk is goading him about the death of his mother that happened five minutes ago. Yeah, because because Spock told him to do it because he told himself to do it. Remember? Right. And Old then, Spock told him to do it. Yeah, the older Spock told him that. And then he's going to be like, I need, I need to go take a break. Good luck, cadet. Take over the ship. So the Holy whole point crap. here is, guys, the whole point is that, well, J.J. needed to get to the point quick. Fine. Whatever. It's but fine. in this situation, you had 10 episodes, so you don't need to rush in. Right. So here's the deal. That movie, we're complaining about it, but they had one movie, one hour and 42 minutes to get to make all that happen. You had here 10 hours. Yeah. 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 10 hours versus an hour and a half or 45 minutes. 10 hours, right. under two hours. I don't, I'm not even justifying JJ's nonsense, but I understand that they had right. to get to the point. My problem is you didn't have to rush anything this this season. Yeah. You had 10 you hours. You didn't need to, yeah. You didn't need to rush it. It just wasn't, like we've said, you know, nauseatingly, it just wasn't managed. The time wasn't managed properly. That's it. Yes, five hours of of this of this entire season was pretty much just wasted. I think so. I do like the fact that that Seven is now the captain of uh, the Stargazer and Field Commission, which is any admiral can give you. And you know, and we got that whole backstory. She tried to be in Starfleet, which we thought was thin too. By the way, Didn't oh like no, that. we you can't be in Starfleet because you're an ex Borg. Um, what, what do you mean you have an ex Borg as the admiral of the fleet? Yeah, but well, and also each of each of was in Starfleet. Oh, and each of Borg. who's a Borg was also on Starfleet. No, no, but you can't be. A, oh, oh, you mean you have all these really talented, regarded people coming to your defense? Now nah, we're still going to ignore them. Oh, they're threatening to resign. Eh, we don't care. You well, can't well, so, be here. 
Right. So guys, so that like, okay, I know some of you are probably like, well, why are they doing this? Why are they nitpicking it like this? Because it's so simple to have just watch season one, see that each of is in a Starfleet uniform and then come up with a different reason why seven couldn't join the Federation instead of, ah, the Federation didn't want you. And by the way, even Admiral Janeway couldn't convince the Federation to put uh, seven into the Federation. You know, it's just it's her whole ridiculous. crew went to bat for her. The fact ridiculous. that it's they ridiculous. doubled and tripled down on it is this is is even worse. Like they yeah, go it's weird. Yeah, the, yeah. The writers didn't even watch their own first season one, and then they go, "Oh, Those oh different and, writers, huh? It's different writers. It's not the same one." Right. Okay. Right. You're right. But we're we're not even, we're not we're gonna we're gonna double down on this and make it even more unbelievable by saying that Jane Way couldn't make it happen. I know it's just, and so it's like, it's becomes unbelievable. And this is like, we're not trying to nitpick, but these are the things that are like irritating about you know, trying to justify plot points that don't make any sense. And then in you know, five you, seconds, Picard solves the problem. Yeah. He field commissions her. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Someone should have she told knows Admiral, the board better than anybody else. Someone should have told Admiral Janeway that she could have just done that. <laughs> you got to be in war to get a field commission. My friend, All right, whatever. Oh, but they weren't in war here. All right, whatever. All right. Okay, moving on. All right. All right, so now, so it looks really big. It doesn't anymore. I mean, no, it doesn't look as big as it did on the monitor. Right, it looked big, and now it's small. Smaller, right. Yeah, so they showed all the planets in the Alpha Quadrant, and then this giant round thing. (laughs) Yeah, this massive ball of swirly fire. I'm like, holy crap, this is taking up a quarter of the Alpha Quadrant. Oh, my God. They're going to end right. the season with the destruction of the Gamma right. Alpha Quadrant. <laughs> we went back to the wrong future. Q. Oh, no. Not Khan anymore. Q. You know. The Alpha Quadrant is about. They're going to they're going to end the show the ultimate cliffhanger. The Alpha Quadrant is about to be destroyed. Right. <laughs> we just watched 10 episodes about Picard coming to terms with his feelings. And we end with. The Alpha Quadrant's about to be destroyed. <laughs> and, and it's a good example of what a small mistake can on screen in your graphics department or whatever can make for audience understanding of what, what the heck's actually going on. Right. You know, and it's like, you're looking at it. And because they did it so quickly and there was so little time as the board continued to say over and over again, Jaborgi, Jibor- there's no time, right? You're, now we've, we're stuck with this like quick element. They, they defeat it. And then now the Borg are going to guard it. Well, they don't defeat it. They they avoid it destroying everything with the shields. And now it's a yes. transwarp conduit. And now conduit. it's a transwarp conduit, which if anything other than the Borg come through it, would be a little suspect at this point. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Gigantic, small, it shoots out laser. Or fireball, the shields stop it. It turns into a transwarp conduit. It's the birth of a new transwarp conduit. Now they're going to the the Borg are going to become a temporary member of Starfleet. I'm sorry, the Federation, and they're going to stand guard over the transwarp conduit. Oh so, yeah, so much of this. We're going to have board Borg on Borg action coming up here pretty soon. Right, but Allison Pill's not in. And, but yeah, no more. Let's Al- see. Now that's interesting. We know for a fact, according to Allison Pill, she's not in season three. Right. So can I ask you guys a question? Why did we end it with her guarding that thing? That means that this transwarp conduit has nothing to do with season three. Yeah, it's not important. Unless they just go, oh, well, they left or, oh, she's gone. That'll be bad. Right. 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 So they needed a reason for her to be in such a hurry. And the reason was that the conduit was forming. And she didn't have time to explain anything. Okay, mm. fine. Okay, got it. <clears throat> um, show up a little sooner next time. Huh? Yeah, show up a little sooner. Show I mean, up ten minutes earlier. <laughs> you're, in, you're, in, you're well. You are also you're also in a time ship. Is the, like, yeah, or something. Yeah, we don't yeah. Know. And you spent a lot of time waiting for Picard to get there. Four hundred years. So yeah, you should have been like the galaxy is in danger. Picard, come here now. Yeah, show up six months earlier. Let's get a plan together. I'm sorry. Let's stop doing that. Let's stop. It's not fair. Let's stop doing it. All right. So whatever it is, um, now Jaborgi is watching uh, 
the gay. I would have loved to have seen like the inside of this thing and and, and it revealed to be the Rios. I'm sorry, the La Serena. I mean, it it is the La Serena. It has to be. That's what we're saying. That's our canon. That our head. It would have been cool if they did. Yeah, you're right. It would have been cool if they did like a flyby of it and you saw La Serena on the side or something. Yeah, you saw like a piece of it and it says like the La Serena. Yeah, you know, that would have been cool. It. I don't know. That would have been hey, if you want to throw in, yeah, it, listen, if you guys want to throw in Easter eggs, hook us up with ones that really are cool, like that one. Right. Which ha has no bearing on the story which, and just adds which confirms, to the Well, it confirms what we suspect. It's an actual revelation that makes sense to the story and doesn't ruin anything else. Right. All right. All right. So, bada bing, bada boom. Um, they they solve the problem. Jaborgies, blah, blah 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 blah. All right, now we're back at the game. Now this is when, this is when the first contact theme music starts to play. Right Why are here. Why playing it? Yeah. It's yeah. like da, 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 da. and you're like up up. They're at ten they're forward. Yep. TNG is coming. We know they're gonna come because at the end of the first contact theme music, it plays the TNG jingle. Woo! Oh, my body is ready, Picard. Show me the crew. Show it to me, man. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah. What happens? What happens? Nothing. Nothing. He nothing. he's back with Laris again, and that's it. Nothing. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> nothing loris gets the or card gets the girl that's what happens the fact that she has the picture of rios on uh, in like 10 forward is annoys me so greatly <laughs> the fact that she knows she knew the whole time when he came to see her what was going to happen bothers me so much the fact that you're playing the first contact theme music and the tng theme music when none of those characters are present bothers me Artists. so much the card is <laughs> <laughs> Guinan is no it's a tease man I totally get it I know what you mean I, I don't even want to can you not show that I don't even talk about it you know why because frankly speaking Whoop Whoopi Goldberg met Picard twice for the first time and that's just going to blow my mind forever and I don't have an answer for that I got nothing I got nothing because if you think about it after he met her in 2024 and came back to the future, wait, whoa, didn't mean to say that, went back to his correct time, then everything else should have been put in place. Data went back. He originally met uh, Guinan in the 1800s. And so that really event should have never occurred for her. Yeah. So what you're telling me is really they're not in the correct timeline. They're Doesn't in another seem like branch. It. They're in Seems another like branch. another branch. <clears throat> They're in a branch that they created while attempting to snip the other branch. They might have made their that made that branch's future better, but in reality, yeah. they're not in the prime branch. Sounds like a video to me. <laughs> Time travel, man. Make a note for that one. Yeah. Prime drink time. it up yeah and they're drinking but eleanor's freaking card has gotta go okay card has gotta go he goes See, Laura, i'm thinking they're gonna show up maybe but no nah, i'm still i'm still holding out hope man yeah i was still holding out hope because you still hear that damn theme music you're like oh yeah. any moment now i'm like oh he's got laris has got to be there okay i got it but you know laura it'll he'll finish up with laris and he'll turn around and be like ba boom but it didn't happen and we, I, we also we expected we expected a stupid cliffhanger. We did because we were, yeah, we were pretty much told, we told or it we was told, insinuated. That's what we were told it was going to be. All right, yeah, and the rest of the the rest of the episode legitimately is just him hooking up with real Laris, who admittedly is a very handsome woman. So I get it, and. Uh, yeah, as they're panning out, I'm like, oh, it's not going to happen. And that was it. <clears throat> Season over. First assistant director. <laughs> Second, producer, third, producer, producer. Fourth. Fifteenth assistant director. <laughs> producer, producer. There, so let's go, to, let's go to the chat, bro. 1,200 people made this show. <laughs> <laughs> but only two people wrote it. <laughs> 
1,400 people made the show, but only two had pen to paper. Only two writers the whole time. <laughs> All right, ready? Oh, All right. my. Oh, yes. Okay. <sighs> All right, let's take a check before we go into uh, uh, Strange New Worlds. Okay, yes, let's let's come back here. Um, I'm going to come back up here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Let me just pick out some cool things here. Oh, Archmage Frey. Too bad not Laris forgot she had the power to mind control people. That's a good one. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, right. He also said Soong needs to survive so that he can continue his lineage to eventually uh, to, to, make, to invent data. Yeah, so soon he's got to uh, live. There's a great, the great theory. Whoa, that, where's his kid, bro? There's a great theory. Who? Who's the offspring of soon? Oh, see, that's the theory. He soon is a clone. Okay. And every eighty years or so, he clones himself and transforms it. Transfers his consciousness. I like that idea because this soon, I didn't see any kids. And wait for it. The reason he starts making data is because he's tired of the constant, constantly having to clone and transfer his consciousness every 50 or 60 years. Oh, I mean, that's a get. Okay. All right. Well, so he's okay. creating data for the purpose of uploading his consciousness, which is exactly what they did with Picard at the end of season one. True. But that was okay. And the final soon was able to accomplish that, but. I don't know if they've always known how to do that. That would seem kind of weird. No, no, they're right. working on it. The whole time they were working on it, they kept cloning themselves. Soon as a clone of soon as a clone of soon as a clone of soon. And but he, but he, in order to have the ability to transfer that, if he's working on it, then how the heck is he transferring his consciousness into the next soon? Oh, no, he's yeah, he's able to transfer his consciousness, but he's not able to build a body that's going to last forever until he gets to data. And All before right. data, he goes through. Remember his wife. Uh, before lore then data <clears throat> i get it i mean I, I let's not i hate dealing in hypotheticals well, because what, there's no there's no canon to back it up what about the soon in the end of a card the card season one is what is that him? a robot no it's a person right it's a person all right we, dude data's data's creator was ancient no way he's creating he's he has kids i'm just saying i don't know either you're right clone, that is the clone, weird clone, thing clone, about clone, it clone. Okay, I guess I could use that since I don't see any kids. I guess okay. What are the what are the, what else going to be? What else going to be if, if if there's no kids? How else do you procreate in I Star mean, Trek? Nobody ever explained it, so I guess bad story writing. Clone <laughs> the way. clone a clone of a clone of a clone of a clone. I get it, but I just I'm saying I'm not sure that's what they're thinking. And I'm not sure all these years of of soon. What are the first uh, everybody's Adam going? Soon hey, was hold doing. on to that he thought. Was, it's he a was clone. We'll people. get to it in twenty years. What the first Adam soon was cloning. His daughter a bunch of times. That was his life's work. Was was trying to make a clone. Those were all clone. Cor and they wouldn't. And they didn't survive. Right. Right. So he finally figured out. He's going to use the augment DNA or whatever to figure out the problem, and he's going to clone himself before he dies. All right. We're just never going to see it. But okay. Right. Right. Hey. We're never going to see it. We're never, yeah. I, mean, I forget it. Yeah. We're done maybe with maybe, maybe we see it in season three. Well, we're not no, done with we soon. Don't. No, we're, we're done with soon. We're not done with soon. Brent Spiner's in season three. I know, but I don't think he's going to be soon. Remember? So he's going to be lore, which no, he's I mean, I'm, I'm down for him to continue being soon, but we're not going back to 2024. Well, we, we better not go back. 20. If we go back to 2024 in season three, well, the fisticuffs are going. Okay. I'm sorry. We cannot have another season of not being in space. Yeah, maybe that's when they reveal like the whole clone thing. Okay, I'll, I'll buy it. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. Let's see here. I don't understand the whole Nazi world. This is Gray. And then how it is not the Nazi world. Join the rest of us, Gray. <laughs> the rest of us. Welcome to the club, bro. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking about that over and over again. Q somehow created it. The, 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 thumb, the finger snap fixes everything. Um, let's see. Okay. Archmage Frey, the future is absolutely changed no matter what, because Guinan remembers this meeting 
Thank you. We, as we talked about me, this meeting of Picard instead of time's arrow in the corrected future. So he just, he, he confirms what we just said. So, so, so it's a branch. They're not on the original timeline then. You're right. It's hundred percent a branch. It must be or, or time. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Does every change in history have to create a branch or can it just change the future? I mean, you can't, you can't pick and you either do, you either, it's either branch theory or it's single or it's sacred timeline theory. It's one of the two. Or it's a paradox. Or it's a paradox. Yeah. So this must be a paradox because I don't even want to theorize on it being a different time line. It, it has to be, it has to be another, an, another branch because they specified that it was a branch theory. If they okay. specified that and there are clear changes in the future, then it's it's I just it's a don't branch. want it to be that. So can we not That's have it be that? Like so you because shouldn't I have, personally you shouldn't have done branch theory. You should have done sacred I, timeline then. I, Shane Montgomery, do not want it to be that. So let's just not be that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't it's just I don't want to go there because I the whole branch thing this is too much crap to try to hold on to and to try to make sense of. I understand what you're saying, but that's this is one of my big problems with the time travel for Picard season two. It's it's messy. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There was some. Let's see. So Archmage Frey says here the Bell riots happened two months after Picard and Friends, September 2024. It is possible that when we'll talk about it in Strange New Worlds, when they do talk about the uh, the second civil war, maybe this is what they're referring to. The time frame, the bell rights, and afterwards. Wait, 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 wait. It happens. The bell rights happened two months after that. Uh, yeah. Then why did they even use Q, man? They should. Ah. No, no, they couldn't. Remember, it was Romulan. It was Romulan. <laughs> do you really want to go back there again? Do you really want to do that? Because, but, but it, they, but they, had, they had a way to get back that didn't need Q. Not really, not really. Unless someone was looking for them. See, the <clears throat> DS9 crew was trying to get, you know, was looking for them. No, but they, but the Admiral of Starfleet would know what happened with DS9 and when. But the future was changed and there was no Starfleet. No, but, they, but in his mind, they fixed the future. And they stopped Adam. Would soon. they know that they were missing? See, I'm sorry, man. We can't, if we, we keep know doing this. But who know of what, who was missing? Well, who would have known to go back and get Picard? No. <clears throat> no, man. Picard would have known that of the of the mission report of the DS9 crew going to that time in two months. Well, so you're saying he would have just joined up with, <laughs> he would have waited two months and like caught a ride back with Cisco? Let me ask you a question. <laughs> wait, 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 hold up, hold up. But let it's the wrong you, time frame. Let me ask you a question, Shane. Ready? You and I are stuck in the past. Okay. Name a time. We know, you and I both know, that in a month time, our ride's gone, but in a month time, some other ship from the future is going to show up, not knowing about us, but we know that they have the technology to get back. Our only option is to stay there or finish well, the sentence. I know, but you're not going to your time. <clears throat> you're still going into the past. But you're going to a time that has the equipment to get back to your time. Sort of. Yeah, I, I mean, we never got the sense that everybody just time traveled at their whim, right, in Star Trek. So he would have had to go to DS9's time, Fucking right? St stupid time travel. It's so stupid. That's what I'm saying. We just got to stop talking about it because it just gets it gets worse every second. Let's go back into here. Yeah, they had communicators. Hail Cisco. Ah, whatever. <laughs> no, oh, 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 that's a good point, Frey. What if you hailed... What if you hailed? I'm sorry. What if you hailed Cisco, and through a uh, an encrypted message to open up at a certain time in the future on his ship? Why do we need to talk about this any further? Whatever. It's uh, uh, my, my, my whole point. It's it's done. It's, it's like we don't need to theorize on how they could possibly get back. We spent an hour talking about okay. how they could possibly have gotten back a different way. Cunningham he was there. It's not, it's He's not there. a Walter bro. It's not a Walter. All right. Okay. All right. So let's stop. You're right. The only way to get back is bad writing. So let's move on. There you go. 
Well, yeah. I or mean, that's not, that sucks, bro. That sucks. Q does. It's what Q does. Uh, let's see. Sucks. The original. Oh, I would argue Q didn't pull them out of the OG timeline. He pulled their consciousness out of their now exploded bodies and overwrote their doppelgangers. Oh, that's Q. true. Yeah, the original because- versions of their bodies did die in the explosion. Yeah. So if that's the case, then. Yeah. All right. I guess Q, that is a good point. I mean, that's never been explained that that's how he moves people around. Uh, but. That's, but that's what happened because Seven didn't have implants. Seven didn't have implants. Did Was Picard still a robot? Yeah, he was. Yes, but it was. But he had a reason for that because in, in that person's oh, you're body, right. he, he was, he, uh, Gal Dukat was the reason he was a robot. Oh, you're right. So Archmage, you might be right. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, let's see. New realities, Daniel's hot topics. Daniel, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> New realities are created all the time at every point in time. <laughs> I don't want to hear that because I don't want to think about that as too yeah. much. So there was a theory that every binary choice creates another version of said right. binary choice, like shortening your And cat. if that is true, I just, you know, cool. But I don't want to like, I don't want to watch a movie that does that because, you know, I don't want to get lost. I need to understand what it is I'm watching. So there's a version of me. And with that theory, there's a version of me that is skinny, metrosexual, and lives in New York. Okay. I'm not sure why you picked that, but all right. Well, because like when I was in the military, I went to Baltimore. Someone asked oh, me I if see. I wanted to stay in Baltimore. I said, no, Baltimore oh. sucks. That means that at some point, there's a version of me that said, hey, why not? Okay. Right, because every choice creates an alternate. Every yeah. binary choice creates another version that, uh, that that lives beyond you. So when I went to Baltimore and someone asked me to stay, a friend of mine, uh, I said no, I don't want to stay. Baltimore sucks. I'm from California. I'm going back to Cali. And well, there's a version of me that did stay, and uh, I'm probably really skinny because I drive, I ride a bike and not a car, you know, and yeah. I'm telling you, there's a version. Or you just read too many pick a path books when you were growing up. And, uh, you know, there's two options for every page. Flip to page 119 if you make this choice. Ooh, there's also a version of me that's dead because of decisions I made in the military. For sure, there's definitely multiple versions of me that are dead. Right. <laughs> that's, that's, some, that's some mind effery right there. Right? If, the, if, 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 if the, the binary choice is what puts you in another reality, and we, we were in the military. How many realities are just dead Brian's and Shane's? Many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see here. So Daniel's hot topics. I cried when Q died. Yeah, it was, that was just a wonderful moment. Wonderful moment. Oh, let's see. Next season, they will ruin the original cast, David Nunya. Uh, I hope not, Dave. I hope not. <laughs> You know, I really hope not because, and I, we, this is the moment we should talk about this where Metallus, Metallus is yeah. complete control of season three. Yes. Uh, nobody else. He's, there's no other cooks in the kitchen. It's him. So if it does not succeed, it is all him this time. Right. And he does have really good past experience with 12 monkeys. Um, and I think he's capable of doing it well. He and the TNG crew. Now this is important because I mean, Gates McFadden is saying it that it's going to be excellent. And a lot of people are saying that it's going to be a good send off for the TNG crew. Yeah. Now, if they're saying that and they're the people that were in it, let's hope that, let's hope that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, Gates McFadden hasn't been in anything in a very long time. So I guess that's true. But I mean, I mean, if, if it's a good send off, if they're saying it's a good send off, let's hope it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good point. It may not be. Yeah, so Allison Pill is not in this season. And I would argue the best thing about this season after Q was probably Allison Pill's performance. Um, um Yeah, I guess Annie Wershing and, and Allison yeah, both of combined. Them. Right. Um were really good. I, John Delancey was great in his moments too. Yeah. Um I would say after John Delancey. I would say if if I if I had to rate the the characters. John Lancey Q, uh, Jaborgi, so Girardi and Borg Queen, uh, and Warshi, whatever, and Allison Pill. Yeah. And um, and Adam Soon before episode four. 
when he had mm. Bears. Okay. Yeah, and then Orla Brady somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, she, she was good too. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay, Ruben Ruben Hilber says also shouldn't the folder have been before 1996 since growing people in the tanks takes years. That's a really great point. It was 96 when when uh, Khan goes into space. So yeah, why does the folder say 96? That's a good point. Oh, maybe it's maybe it has something to do with him getting that spaceship and making a trans warp conduit. Oh. No, dude. No, there's no reason to make a trans warp conduit from the Alpha Quadrant, right? <laughs> or maybe there is. Maybe he's a lot. I don't know. Maybe that's weird. Maybe they're Borg. They're Borg hybrid human genome project people. All right. Yeah, it's weird that Brent Spiner's in season three, when he made it very clear he's not going to play Data again. He made it very clear, no Data. So that only make that only gives him two options, really, because before is pretty much Data, right? So let's we got to take before off the table. And we yeah. got to take data off the table. So that, that gives us two options. Either another descendant of Soon or Lore. And mm. I don't think he wants to play Lore. I don't think he wants to deal with all the makeup, the makeup. And required to play that character. So it's probably a version of Soon, either another version of a descendant of Soon or the original or the actual Soon we just saw, which wouldn't would be so confusing. Well, the Trek reviewer says maybe Elnor is not the only one Q brought back. Maybe Q brought Data back from the dead, too. No, but yeah, that's a cool idea. But Brent Spiner literally said that it's in his contract that he won't play Data again. Mm. After after season one, he, he will not play that character again because he, he said there's no emotion. The makeup's weird. It doesn't look right. He doesn't want to play that character again. Trek reviewer also says, how do we know that this will be Wesley's only appearance? Um, I mean, it's possible that Wesley could somehow come back into season three and, and maybe this whole element of bringing um, that other character to make her a traveler has some sort of implication on the series. But unfortunately, everything they've done means that they will not connect that. Because, you know, like we said earlier, you take the the time cop guy and you take all these different things that you thought were going to be something and they turn out to be nothing. This is probably just fan service for Wesley Crusher. Unfortunately could happen, but it just doesn't seem likely. You know what? You know what would have been awesome, Shane? Huh? If, if we got, what would have been awesome is if we got this red Wesley Crusher, you know, scene. Yeah. You know, and he gave her the choice, you know, a, you know, or she said, you know, you're out of time, you know, let me take you, uh, you know, with me you know, mm. and so that you're not out of time or whatever. And never mention anything about the supervisors, like at all. Yeah. Have the same scene and just don't mention the supervisors. Just have him be a traveler. Yeah, that, that would goes throughout fine. time and he's, he's sort of adjusting people that are out of time. Now there'd be a nitpicky thing with like, okay, why didn't he show up when Picard was literally out of time? But whatever. But make it so that she could implicate time still. Right. You know what I mean? Like he pulls her out as is like assisting Picard. Right. Would have been right. cool. Oh yeah. yeah. Like she like, like he's cleaning up after Picard's mess. So, yeah, that would have been cool. And then he, Picard don't even know it. And maybe he's done that in other situations. That would have been kind of oh, cool. That would have been cool because that would have made where a crusher looks like sort of a like a badass. Like, oh I'm yeah, I'm, help, I'm helping still. Uh, Archmage Frey says here also, what did they do with the body of not Laris? think that is such a great question because I was thinking the same thing when I'm watching it. I'm like, okay, she's dead. Somebody's going to walk across these Romulan ears here and this body just laying here on this military, uh, you know, post what, yeah. What did they do with her body? Right. And she has like, it doesn't, she have green blood Romulans. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, but I mean, obviously the, I mean, Imagine, they're going to know I mean, she's yeah, an alien. Well, the ears could be like, oh, you know, maybe she's a hardcore body mod. Or no, I, no. I mean, they're going to know when they do an autopsy and they're going to figure it out. The second they do an autopsy, autopsy, they cut in the green blood and multiple hearts and the way, like, yes, it's an alien, clear. And you got to, yeah, you got to. So now do they even show how Picard gets, I guess he uses her tech to. Yeah, he must. It's all off camera. Sorry. They don't have an answer for us. So yeah, it's all off camera. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, there's an alien, a dead alien at the site of the most important uh, space launch in human history. Yes. Which is interesting because way back on uh, 
on assignment earth it was also the launching of uh yeah. you know of a space satellite of of sorts interesting yeah so it was similar so the question is though how does that not like change the future too what us finding an alien well that's what i'm saying though they obviously they didn't find her right i mean picard wouldn't have left her there so everything's off picard camera got cool, back. cool 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 why not yeah, just have he, three seconds of her activating her tech and taking her with him to the chateau? Could have been easy to do it. Or back to her apartment or whatever. <clears throat> I don't know. Why didn't Wesley come and collect her? I don't know. Maybe he's the, he's in charge of the of the traveler or the of the supervisors. Let's see here. Uh <clears throat> I'm really uh, Archmage. I'm really sad the final Q snap was just a flash transition and not the classic Q snap. That would have been cool. To actually have the classic Q snap effect. Yeah, that would have been really cool. Uh, Dort Knight's here. What's up, Danny? What's up, Danny? <clears throat> How can you call this a Star Trek show? Nikki says it is in space for like five seconds. Let's hope season three keeps us in space because you're right. It's called LA Trek. LA Trek. We were talking about earlier, but Star Trek four is like the most highly grossing star trek film of all time and they spent most of the movie not in space as well let's see all right you ready almost done here almost there almost there i just want to go see if there's any more big things here really quick there was an episode of Voyager where they met a race who created transwarp conduits called dragon's teeth or something like that i remember that Okay, so that could be somebody else with the transwarp conduits. We need to look in deeper into that going forward because it could, it may not just be the board. I told no, there are other people that use the transwarp conduits. Oh, he says made them. Oh, made them? Yeah, could create them. Oh, yeah, okay. We got, yeah, we got, oh, let's, um, let's note that down. God, we got, yeah. Damn, I didn't know that. <clears throat> David's saying the Borg did not create the transwarp conduits. I recall they did, but maybe it could just be thinking that they uh, they they were mentioned with them so frequently. It could just be one of those things. Yeah. So what? Yeah. If so, are they made or are they birthed? Because birth is like a natural occurrence. Made is like a no. They have to be made. Yeah. Because like every time they're birthed, they just take out entire solar systems. I mean, make any sense? uh jeremy's like maybe we're finally getting the iconians that's like been the promise of star trek forever we still have not got iconians yeah that would be cool yeah that's been a long that, that has been a promise every new version of a uh of star trek sort of um uh tiptoes around the the idea but never actually delivers okay i think that's it 